Mr. Klein Storytime. Hello, my name is Mr. Klein. I've been an elementary school teacher for almost 30 years, and I love reading stories to young people just like you. In fact, I've got a great story that I'd like to share with you right now. So let's get started. Jackie Robinson, He Led the Way by April Jones Prince, illustrated by Robert Casilla. Jackie Robinson, He Led the Way. Jack Roosevelt Robinson was born in a small cabin in Georgia in 1919. Everyone called him Jackie. His family lived and worked on a white man's farm. Slavery had ended more than 50 years before, but often it did not seem that way. Black children could not go to school with white children. Black families could not eat in restaurants with white people or stay at the same hotels. They had to sit in the back of public buses and in the worst seats at ballparks. One day, Jackie Robinson would help change all this. He did it through baseball. Jackie's family moved to Pasadena, California when he was still a small boy. They were the only black family on their block and their neighbors did not welcome them. But Jackie's mother told her children, we have the same right to live here as anyone else. She did not want her children looking for trouble, but she did want them to stick up for themselves. One day, a girl called Jackie mean names. Her father threw stones at Jackie. What did Jackie do? He shouted names and threw stones right back at them. In school, Jackie did okay, but in sports, he made magic. Jackie always played to win, even a game of tag. Kids even paid Jackie to be on their team. All through high school and college, Jackie played sports. Football, baseball, and basketball. He set a new record for the long jump. He was a local hero. His name was always in the papers. After college, Jackie wanted to play sports for a living, but no major team in any sport hired black players. There were all black baseball teams, like the Kansas City Monarchs and the Homestead Grays. These teams had their own leagues. Fans flocked to see stars like Satchel Paige and Josh Gibson. The games were fast-paced and exciting. Jackie could play on one of these teams. Except for one thing. World War II had started. Even in the U.S. Army, black soldiers did not eat, sleep, or train with white soldiers. In the snack bar, only a few seats were set aside for blacks. We are all in this war together, Jackie told the general and everyone should have the same rights. The general agreed. Black soldiers got more seats in the snack bar. After the war, Jackie played baseball for the Kansas City Monarchs, but Jackie wasn't a monarch for long. Branch Rickey was the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers. He had heard about Jackie Robinson from a scout named Clyde Sukforth. Just like Jackie, Branch Rickey hated to lose. He wanted to win a World Series. There were so many great black ball players. Rickey thought it was time that one of them joined the Dodgers. Maybe Jackie Robinson. Branch Rickey asked Jackie Robinson to meet him in New York. I want you to play for the Dodgers, he told Jackie. You will be put down and spit upon, but you must not fight back. That will make people say that blacks don't belong in the major leagues. Do you have the guts to play no matter what? It was not Jackie Robinson's nature to keep quiet, but he decided he had to. He gave Branch Rickey his answer. Yes. In 1946, Jackie married his college sweetheart, Rachel Isom. She traveled with him to spring training in Florida. 
Jackie played his first season on a Dodgers minor league team. This was like practice for the major leagues. As always, he played to win. He led his league in hitting and was tied in runs scored. He was second in stolen bases. So on April 15, 1947, Jackie Robinson made history as the first black ball player in the major leagues. He stepped onto Ebbets Field in Brooklyn. He was wearing a Dodgers uniform. He was their first baseman. He said it was a dream come true. Branch Rickey's warning also came true. Once again, people called Jackie mean names. He got hateful letters. At games, pitchers on the other team threw balls at his head on purpose. Even many of the Dodgers did not want him around. Jackie took it all in silence. But lots of fans adored Jackie right from the start. His courage and flashy play proved that blacks belonged in the major leagues. Jackie hit and ran as well as the best of his white teammates. But he had a way of stealing bases that was all his own. Jackie could steal home plate. He would dance on and off third base. Then he'd dance down the baseline. The next moment, he was sliding in the home plate. Score! Jackie was named Rookie of the Year. By 1949, Jackie had been quiet long enough. Now he spoke up when umpires made bad calls. And he talked back to ballplayers on other teams. Jackie lost some fans, but he was standing up for his rights, not just in baseball, but in all of America. In 1949, he was voted the National League's most valuable player. It was a great honor. Jackie deserved it. Jackie helped the Dodgers get to the World Series six times. Five times they lost. Then, in 1955, they finally won. Jackie said the win was one of the greatest thrills of my life. By that time, there were almost 40 black players on major league teams. There were blacks in other pro sports, too. Jackie Robinson had helped change America. Jackie played in the major leagues for 10 years. Then he became a businessman. He spent more time with Rachel and their three children. And he kept working for equal rights. In 1962, Jackie was the first black man voted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Jackie lived to be 53. He showed America that talent is not based on skin color. Jackie Robinson was a great ball player and a great American. The End Thank you for coming to Storytime. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I read new stories every week, so be sure to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to hear another one. Hope to see you again soon.